Ranger Bill, warrior of the woodland, struggling against extreme odds, traveling dangerous trails, fighting the many enemies of nature. This is the job of the guardian of the forest, Ranger Bill. Pouring rain, freezing cold, blistering heat, snow, floods, bears, rattlesnakes, mountain lions. Yes, all this in exchange for the satisfaction and pride of a job well done. Say, have you ever known a fellow that had two left feet, or two left hands, or ten thumbs? <laughs> no, I don't mean that anybody actually has a peculiarity like this. But there is a certain type of person who never seems able to do anything right. It's really a terrible handicap, although it can be overcome. Let's drop over to Ranger headquarters. There's a young fellow there who fits right into this category. And we'll call this story Timid Timothy. Boy, talk about the luck of the Irish. I must have been born at the wrong time. Everything I do is wrong. And I mean everything. Uh, perhaps it just seems that way, Tim. Ever trying to analyze why you're not successful at things? Sure, lots of times. And always come out with the same answer. Timothy Sullivan, you're just a flop. A fiasco and a failure from the hey, word... Hey, hold up there, you raven maverick. <laughs> Keep calling yourself all those names. You'll end up by thinking you're no good at all. The world ain't painted black all over, you know. Well, if you don't mind, I'll disagree, Stumpy. It's painted black wherever I set my miserable feet. Ah, uh, Tim, don't be so pessimistic. Suppose you and I sit down together sometime soon and... Make an analysis of your efforts and why they failed. Bill, that's an invitation I won't refuse. You let me know the time and place and I'll be there. Okay, Tim. How about a week from tonight at my house? Well, that'll be swell. Well, I've got to run along. There's a hot deal cooking and, well, I sure hope it's a success. <laughs> Poor Tim. He sure gets himself into the most harebrained ventures, doesn't I'll he? I'll say he does. <laughs> no wonder he doesn't make a success. Uh, when a man goes into business, he got to use head. A man have to make profit or he go to poor house in no time. <laughs> Remember the time he bought a hundred rabbits? He was going to sell them to children as pets. Only there wasn't any market, either here in Naughty Pine or anywhere else. <laughs> and how about that time he opened up a bicycle shop? Now, who wants to ride a bicycle in these hills, I ask you? Well, that's why I asked Tim to come over to the house. He needs a good dose of business education. Well, maybe Tim is not kind who can be in business for himself. Maybe he should get a job and work for someone else. I don't think so, Gray Wolf. The boy's smart, basically. Has that certain sense that makes a go-getter out of him. Only he needs training. Ah, there's Officer Sullivan directing traffic. One thing sure, Tim have fine dad. I'll say got a heart of gold, and yet he's always the strong arm of law. Hey, there's Mike waving to us to hey, wait. Hey, fellas, wait. Okay, Mike. Hey, you're just the man I want to speak to, Bill. Sure, what's on your mind? Oh, it's about one of my five sons, Timothy. Oh, yeah, I know him well. Bill, I'm a telling you. He's a fine boy, but... Out of all my boys, he causes me the most worry. Yeah? How's that? Oh, with his half-witted business schemes. Now, he's in one up to his ears. Oh, that's so? Well, what kind of a high-flying business deal has he gotten into now? Well, uh, he didn't get himself into this, exactly. It uh, was sort of handed to him, you might huh? say. What are you talking about? Well, his uncle, my brother, who lives in the East, asked him if he wanted to go into business with him. Well, that's not so bad. Uh, at least he'd be in partnership with an experienced man. No, Bill, it ain't that way. His uncle will be in the East, and uh, Timothy will be here in Naughty Pine. That doesn't make sense. Well, you're telling me, Henry. But uh, let me tell you the rest of it. We're listening, young fella. Uh, well, uh, Timothy's uncle was out here about... Uh, three years ago and bought some timber land for an investment. Well, now he says it's time to be working the timber and cutting it down and selling it. Well, something wrong with that? Uh, wait a minute. This is what takes the cake. 
He asked Timothy to manage the business for him. Oh, I see. And Tim said yes, huh? Well, but get this. Now that he's made his promise, his uncle sent him a check for $10,000 to start with. Ten thousand? Wow. It sounds like a lot, I know, but logging is an expensive operation, so ten thousand dollars isn't too much. Uh, one question, Mike. Uh, can't your boy back out of it? Just admit that the job's too big for him and return the check? No, the crazy kid's given his word. And he ain't gonna break out of it this time or I'll strap him within an inch of his life. This one time he's gonna make good or else. Hey, you're putting it pretty strong. Well, I got reason to it's about time he took his place in the world as a man. Besides, I think this is a splendid opportunity for him. This is one deal that I think's a good one, and it's the only one he's had so far that's been worth anything. But, uh, well, uh, here's the problem, Bill. Um, he ain't gonna make a success of it unless he has help. Mm, I think you're right. And I'm sure Ed Banker would be only too glad to help him in his business affairs. Well, I know he would, Bill, but... Now, that ain't uh, who I want to help him. Oh? Well, who do you want? You. Me? Now, wait a minute. I've got all I can now, handle. I know right you're now. a busy man, but you're the one I want for Tim. But why me? Well, because I trust you. And you're a fine Christian gentleman besides. Will you help him, Bill, for my sake? Uh... All right, I'll be glad to, Mike. I'll do all I can to help him make his logging business a success. Oh, well, thanks, Bill. If it's any comfort to you, you've eased the worrying of an old man's heart. Hello, Bill. I'm here. Johnny on the spot. Or should I say Timothy? <laughs> Come on in, Tim. Yeah, let me have your coat. Thanks, Bill. Well, how are things, huh? Oh, pretty exciting right now, Bill. Dad said he talked to you yesterday. Yeah, he did. Uh, hope you picked a comfortable chair for yourself, Tim. Uh, we got a lot of talking to do. Right. Well, what do you think of this whole proposition my uncle's made me for managing the cutting of his timber? I think it has good possibilities. Main thing is, what do you think about it? Frankly, Bill, I'm scared. I've been such a failure to date that well, I'm seriously thinking of calling the whole thing off. Why are you looking at me that way? Timothy Sullivan, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. What do you mean? I mean, that would be the coward's way out. Where's your backbone? You made a promise, didn't you? Well, sure, but $10,000 is a lot of money. Now, wait a minute. Tell me something. Yeah? Is it the $10,000 that scares you? Or the possibility that you might make a failure of this, too, that's that's made you squeamish? Well, I... Well, that is, you see... Come on, man. Give me a straight answer. Oh, what's the use? Bill, I'm, I'm just scared to death that, that I'm going to make a failure of this, too, and... Well, honestly, I could almost cry about it. That's what I thought. Now you open your ears, young fella, because I'm going to do some talking. And I'm only going to say it once. You're going to make a success out of this venture, or I'll know the reason why. Hello, Bill, Tim. Come right in. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, Ed, uh, have you got Tim's account all set up? I sure have. Here are the papers. Did you sign here? Sure. Well, I mean, that is, if Bill says it's okay. Go ahead. Ed is the most honest banker in the world. He's here to help you. You can trust him. Okay. Where do I sign? Uh, right where the check marks are. Sign in three places. One is a receipt for the checkbook. The other's our authorizations for us to open your account. Well, thanks. Thanks for all your help, Ed. Don't mention it, Bill. I'm more than happy to do it. Well, there you are, all signed and sealed. Now, if you'll uh, endorse this check from your uncle, you'll be in business. Yeah, thank you. Let me tell you one thing, Tim. Yes? What's that? You're handling another man's money. Be careful. Bankers don't like to be associated with failure. 
Why did you take my account if you're pessimistic about the outcome of my managing this venture? I'm not pessimistic. I am realistic. To answer your question, I'm taking the account for one reason. I should say two reasons. One is that your father talked to me as he did Bill. The second reason is that Bill is your advisor. With him helping you, I don't see how you can fail. I see. Thank you. So you see, Timothy Sullivan, you've got to come through this time. Bill, I'm scared. Really and truly. Oh, don't be. There's too much to be done. And you have one other friend you can count on. Don't forget that. You mean the Lord? Yes, Tim. If you use your head, work hard, and show some common sense, I know the Lord will help you to be a success. I'll try real hard, Bill. Honestly, I will. It's good enough for me. Well, thanks for everything, Ed. Come on, Tim. I want you to make a call on an old friend of mine, Frenchie Dussel. Oh, 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 oh. oh Frenchie, he glad to see you, Bill. Oh, Frenchie, glad you bring your friend, the Timothy. Uh, Frenchie, uh, we'd like you to take a short trip with us. Have a look at some timber Tim wants to log. Uh, he needs your expert advice. Oh, oui. oh Frenchie, he glad to go. Uh, I will be back in a few minutes after I give orders to foreman. Okay, Frenchie, we'll be right here for you. Boy, what a hunk of man he is. He must be a Christian, too. Yes, he is. He's a wonderful fellow, Tim. Been a Christian for over three years now. Well, how'd you ever get to know him? Oh, we had a fight, and we became good friends. You had a fight and became friends? Well, how'd you do that? <laughs> yeah, it's a long story. Someday I'll tell it to you. Uh, we haven't time now because Frenchie's coming back. Uh, we'll go see this timber you're going to log. Well, look pretty good to you, Frenchie. Oh, we oui. Frenchie thinks he's good stand the timber. Yeah, that's why my uncle bought it three years ago. He thought it would be a good investment. If this stone she got right, you can have uh, second growth in uh, 20 years. Some good seed trees here. Uh, Frenchie, do you know where Tim can get some good lumberjacks? Oh, no, he was Frenchie for impossible. What do you mean? We can't log without lumberjacks. No way, I know, but uh, good lumberjacks are working now. Any who not work are lazy or no good. Uh oh. You see, Bill? We're starting with two left feet already. Now, take it easy, Tim. Uh, Frenchie, you think this is good timber? Oh, we, oui, Frenchie, say that for sure. You agree, Bill? You good lumberman. Yes, I agree. Okay, Frenchie, we'll take you back to your camp, and Tim and I have a lot of work to do. Okay, fellas, hold it down. Uh, what's cooking, Bill? Yes, how come you called us in? Not that I mind. It's getting kind of dull and monotonous. Uh, go ahead, Tim. You're on your own now. Ralph, Tom, Stumpy, Henry, Grey Wolf, Bill's called you fellas together so I could ask you if you'll help me with my problem. Well, thanks, fellas. Now, I've never been very successful before, but... Now, see here, Sonny, if you're going to start out with them kind of discouraging words, you can count me out. You see, Tim, in the Ranger's Code, there isn't any such word as impossible. Now, go ahead and tell your plan. Well, Bill and I will get equipment and lumberjacks. Uh, Henry, I want you to be part-time bookkeeper and timekeeper because we're going to have to have a payroll to keep when we hire the jacks. Oh, sure, Tim. Why, that bookkeeping I've taken in high school will come in handy. Well, you'll also have other chores to do, such as getting supplies and so forth. Stumpy, Gray Wolf, Ralph, Tom, I want you fellas to get started out at the timber stand and clear snake roads for the logs and Mark out trees to be cut and set up loading platforms for the log trucks to take their loads from. Understand? Hey, yeah, we're you're catching on fast. Uh, fellas, I've released you from your duties uh, 
Actually, you'll get an extra day off this week. Well, let's get a move on then. Henry, see that the boys get all the supplies they need from the warehouse. I've got credit there. Rent a truck from Peter Sandhurst. Sure thing, Tim. Let's go, fellas. Hey, sounds like Tim's got the bull by the horns now. Tim, that was wonderful. Keep it up, boy. Thanks, Bill. Now for the big question. Where do we get the lumberjacks? Well, you'd do better if you'd worry about one thing at a time. Better catch the next train for the lumber mills and get a contract signed to buy your timber. Right. I'll catch the next one for Lumbertown. Meanwhile, would you see if there are any lumberjacks available while I'm gone? Sure thing. Just get that contract, that's all. Say, Jim, uh, will you pass the word around that any lumberjacks looking for work should report to Ranger headquarters in the morning? Uh, sure will, mister. There's a lot of jacks that come in here to eat. Okay, much obliged. Uh, by the way, who do they see? Uh, tell them to see Tim Sullivan. Hey, Ed. Yeah? Uh, will you pass the word that any lumberjacks looking for work should report to Ranger headquarters in the morning? Okay, I'll do that. Let them come in here to pass the time of day. Thanks. Yeah, Ranger, there's a lot of lumberjacks in this here boarding house. Well, would you mind if I put this notice in your bulletin board? Yeah. Well, who's going to start logging? Young Tim Sullivan. Uh, is that so? Well... Now, go right ahead. Well, there ain't many jocks without work these days. I know, but maybe there are a couple that are idle. If Tim can get some from each place, he'll have a crew. Oh, hello, Tim. How'd you make out at the mill? Oh, fine. And you know, I think I got a good contract. Here, take a look at it. Okay. What's wrong? Not a thing. I'd say that this is a good contract. You mean it? Sure. A good piece of business on your part, I'd say. <laughs> this is a red-letter day. For once in my life, I'm, I'm doing something right. I told you it could be done. Just got to use your head, that's all. Say, in about half an hour, some men should be here looking for jobs. <laughs> Yeah, sort of, sort of gives me a funny feeling. All these men working for me. I just hope everything works out. That's all. We gotta meet those deadlines. Now don't you worry, young fella. You use your brains for thinking, not worrying. Do you hear? <laughs> sure, Stumpy. I hear. Say, I'd better get busy and keep the ball rolling. Listen, Sonny, we ain't rolling balls. We're rolling logs. <laughs> Okay, Tim, you give the orders. All right. E easy with that last log now. All right, roll it over. Now up. No, no, no. Hey, Bill, will you drag Gray Wolf on this? All right, Tim. Easy with that, Gray Wolf. Now, easy down. You got to set that log just right. That's good. Right there, she's down. Nice work. Yes, Tim, you've just put the last log on the truck. As soon as the chains are snubbed tight, we can roll. That's fine, Bill. Well, things are sure going better than I expected. Truck's ready to roll. Well, tell the driver to take off, Henry. Okay, man, take her away. Well, Tim, there goes your first load of logs to market. You should be at the mill first thing in the morning. How does it feel to be in business? Well, to be honest, I don't know whether to cry or laugh. I've just got that feeling inside... Oh, no, and I've really accomplished something for the first time in my life. Good boy. Just keep your head, your eyes and ears open, and always remember two heads are better than one. Yeah, especially when mine's a knucklehead. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry I said that. 
I'm trying hard to get rid of that that, that defeated feeling. Okay, forget it. Come on, let's go to work. You got a deadline to meet by next Wednesday. Tonight's the night, Lefty. You all set? Yeah, you said it. It's been a long time between pay, boy. Yeah. we got the whole weekend to spend it. What are you going to do, Slim? Oh, nothing except paint the top. Yeah, and, uh, me too, boy. Yeah. <laughs> they won't forget it soon. Me with a pocket yeah. full of dough. Yeah. Boy, what a time we're going to have, oh, huh? Bill, <laughs> you know, something awful has happened. Only five lumberjacks showed up for work this morning. What? Are you sure? Positive. I just got a call from the foreman. When I jumped in my car and raced over here. What are we going to do? I was trying to catch up on my paperwork. But it'll have to wait now, I guess. Let's go round up those employees of yours. Where could they be? Hotels, boarding houses, restaurants. What's the matter with them? Too much weekend. Oh. These boys work hard and they play harder. I'm sorry to say. I, uh, I think we made a mistake, Tim. A mistake? What do you mean? They shouldn't have been paid until after the deadline on Wednesday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I see what you mean. And it was me that signed a contract with a, a middle-of-the-week clause. Oh, what a knucklehead I am. Now, don't waste your time calling yourself names. Let's rouse those fellas out and get them to work. Come on. <laughs> You only bring three men with you. What's wrong with others? Uh, tell him, Tim. Ah, oh, Gray Wolf, 15 of our lumberjacks are too sick to work. And it's all my fault. I could kick myself for letting those men into town Saturday night with their paychecks. Hey, where's my crew? Only a third of my jack showed up. They're in town, Tom. Oh, I see. But how are we going to cut timber with no men? That's the big question. Hey, um... you guys, how about some lumberjacks? These trees won't fall down by themselves, you know. Might as well come on over, Ralph. Join the Misery Peddler Society, too, and hear the sad story. What a predicament. We got a deadline to meet, and well, half a Monday's already gone. Tim, how many board feed do we need to meet the deadline? 5,000. And when does it have to be at the mill? By Wednesday morning. Mm, it's a lot of logs. We can't do it in a day, Bill. The truck will have to leave here just after noon tomorrow to make it. We'll lose a bonus and maybe the contract. Well, what are you going to do about it? Me? Yeah, you. You're the boss of the shebang, aren't you? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Well, I, I don't know yet. Hey, I've got it. Mm, got what? Hey, you fellas start logging like beavers. I'm going to see a friend of mine. We're not licked yet. And if my plan works... <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tim's taking over like he's been at it all his life. <laughs> Well, that's the story, Frenchy. Can you help us? Oh, 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 oh. oh can Frenchy help you? I will say he come. Uh, my whole crew will be there in uh, half an hour with power saws and bulldozers. What did you say, Frenchy? Sure, the whole crew. Oh, I can't believe it. I only wanted a man or two and some extra equipment. Timothy, my boy, we are moving to a new stand of timber. No, the bulldozers, they move equipment. We not start work until next week. So we'll be down in half an hour. The all crew. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, you don't know what this means. Oh, never mind, Tim. The Lord, he times this right, no? No, Frenchy. The Lord, he timed this right, yes. <laughs> Well, there goes the deadline load. Hope he makes it. I told the driver not to take any chances by trying to make up time. Don't want an accident. Good boy. Never risk the lives of your men. Hey, you guys, come here quick. We've got more trouble. What? Now there's ice on the roads between here and Lumbertown. I just got a phone call here in the shack. Oh, that does it. Now we're finished. Well, that truck will never get there on time and we'll lose out. Now, wait just a minute. Yeah, what? 
I want you to get one thing in your head and get it so you'll never forget it. What's that? Just this. There comes a time in everybody's life when he's exhausted all his ideas. And every possibility of getting out of a jam is absolutely closed. Do you know what to do in a case like that? No. What do you do? You pray, Tim, if you're a child of God, and you find yourself up against the impossible. You pray. I'll guarantee that one or two things will happen. Either God will clear the way for you in answer to your prayer, or he'll strengthen you so that you're able to bear whatever happens. Do you believe that? Yes. All right, then, let's pray. Our Father, we come to Thee with a prayer on our lips. Thanks for that prayer. I'm sure that oh, whatever happens, I can bear it. Don't sound so dismal, Tim. Now move over, pal. Tim's going to make a call. Sure, Bill. Me? Yes. Well, who shall I call? You're going to call Jim Barton at the mill. Oh, but... Never mind the butts, Tim. Take over. You're the boss. Okay. I guess there couldn't be any harm in calling him. Barton Mills. James Barton speaking. Uh, Mr. Barton, this is Tim Sullivan at Naughty Pine. I'm calling because, well, I mean about... Save your breath, young man. We know all about the icy roads. You're not the only one affected. We're extending deadline time half a day. We're making the deadline Wednesday noon this week instead of the usual 8 a.m. Tell your driver to take it easy. We want him and the load here safe. Oh, boy, what a struggle. But we won, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, here's a payroll for your men, Frenchie, and I'll thank them from the bottom of my heart. If it hadn't have been for you, we'd have... Oh, never... never mind, Timothy. Frenchie and the boys only get weeks' exercise with pay. We only lay around anyhow. We get far until the equipment set up at new location. What wonderful friends I've got. Bill, did you know that the bonus money was given to me? My uncle said I could use it to buy him out and stay in the logging business. But how am I going to repay you and well, your rangers for all your help? Forget about it, Tim. The only reward I ask for, I've got. And that is to see you take hold of yourself and begin to manage things. Yeah, you right. 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 Well, thanks a lot, all of you. And I want to say that if I've learned one thing, if I haven't learned anything else, when you trust God, he does things. You're so right, Tim. God does things when you trust him. And if you want to be on the winning side, boys and girls, make sure you're on the Lord's side. See you next week for more adventure with... Ranger Bill!